Hey, what's up, viewer? Welcome back to day 17, hour 3, and hour 2 of the quite steep amount of refactoring that must take place at this point. Alright, so, I'm actually going to start there and convert this to nebula spawning data. And swap the name. And I will do the last paste over of data from the original player data which is now an empty component that I'm going to delete from I'm just going to delete it from the project completely and is that literally so they're all named in okay good all right and we just have a player data folder and I'm actually curious about adding a player data tag because in the long run this might be better. Whoops, I screwed it up. In the long run, I think this is even faster than using gameobject.find. So actually let me really quickly I'm gonna check that out. So Unity 3D. Unity 3D, let's see here. How fast is get object with tag versus game object fine? Let's see how this see what this finds. And sorry, it's like deciding to lag here for a second. I had saying it basically right here. That find with tag is faster. And the thing with this is, I only have a handful. So, game object dot find can only be so slow with how many game objects are actually in the scene. And yeah, here it just. It knows exactly which one it's looking for, basically. Okay, so I don't think it's a big deal because it's only in like component initiations anyway. But technically, since I'm finding that one in particular so often, if I set player data up as player data with a player data tag, then actually this player data has the old data. Let me save this. If I save it, does it fix it or let me remove the component. It doesn't even have, I don't even have that script anymore. And now I have to grab all of these and put them all onto the player data. Uh oh. To add the other ones there? Yeah, okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah, this is a little unfortunate. It looks like they're opening. Yeah, it's weird. It's saying it's not finding my camera data. 
That's definitely weird. Oh, and I think I yanked this one. Oh, and now my errors are magically down to five. Maybe I had more cleaned up than I thought. Okay, so, however, I need to figure out why this isn't... Oh, so it's because the compile errors are not updating the assembly. Or something like that, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so let's just get back to doing this then. So, spawn celestial bodies. has the player data and it looks like I wasn't even using it anywhere. I was using it twice in the code I'm not even using right now. So I'm just going to yank that actually. And I, if I need to I can come back later and fix it. Okay. Close all of these. Oh and I'm going to go back to that Oh, okay, never mind. It looked like it still had something going on there. So, set camera position isn't even doing anything. Active scanning elements has the player data. And it does, in fact, have player data. But player data doesn't have these values, is the thing. It's not even letting me open this. Let me yank this. And then now it should break things. Okay. Whoa. Okay, so there's a ton to fix here. Riddled with player data. Let me see, does that raise my errors? Error counter? No. Okay. Alright, so we're going to need. G O B player data find with tag and a game object find tag and the tag is just player data so that's like functionally the same as find but it's technically faster I'm rather sure it goes straight to the player data because it's the only one with that tag is essentially how that works. And we're going to need is there is there an update function or no it's all it's all one function with one function with callbacks essentially. So we have active scanning radius. So what is that? ASD? Active scanning data, active scanning data, and it's gonna do that weird thing where it ups uppercase or lowercase is it. Oh well. Alright. So active scanning data. And let me see here, I can I was watching this on a different different video. Hold on, my cat might be okay, never mind, he's fine. Okay, so there was a way to like expand this to the side though. Which it's oh hold on, there it was, I think. And I can just take a look at where the values are at here. All right, so active scanning radius is there. Total cost of active scan 
Okay, so let's see here. Active scanning data. Active scanning angle. So at least those two. Active scanning frequency also. And now we've got There's a way to like quick search, basically. So let's see here. VS Studio 2022. Select script with typing. All right, well, it's deciding to lag here. So you show command palette. Man, it's really lagging. I'm pretty sure it's up though, it's like almost done. So show command palette, click open a file. Oh, is this Visual Studio Code? No way. Ah, crap. My bad. I don't actually see it in here. The closest one thing, oh, there's a toggle break, breakpoint option. This is like the only one here. Control, what, control, brace or something like that? Control brace S, is that actually what it is? So I'm here and I push control brace S. It lets me It's not actually, I mean, okay, push control, control this, so let me see. Wait, did this actually, okay, no. All right, so let's give this another shot. If I close the solution explorer and I'm over here or whatever, and I like click control, semicolon, it does open this up, and I can just type in data. Ah, uh, it's so slow though. It brings up system data anyway. But it does give me the list here of them, so I could say like, so in this instance I'm looking for like, economy data basically. Total economy data. And I click enter, it brings, it does bring it up. But then I can't push escape, which is, ah, lame. I dare say so. Is there a close button? Oh, I can push 
shift escape at for shift escape. Okay, so that's kind of strange, but okay. I think I'm getting used to it, but now I can like open up separate. Or I can like yeah, I can like look up separate code basically. Just isn't a terrible idea. And let me see what else. So control this thing, and then shift escape closes it if I'm in it or. Not quite. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so that's kind of a weird combo, but you can technically do that. So, yeah, I guess it's just. I used to use Visual Studio Code, and they just had such a convenient search thing. You just, like, typed. You held, like, Control E. You pressed Control E, and then you started typing, and it just brought up shit. Which isn't quite as nifty as going like this, but plus it's just not as quick either. There's a smidge of a lag, but I can get a pretty quick look at my data types, so I guess it's not terrible. So let's see, can I sh shift escape from here? Good. And then Ah, oh, crap. Close the whole thing, my bad. Alright, so I have to wait for this to reload here. So the only other thing would be switching window selection. So let me take another look at this. How do I... All right, so oh, this is Control Alt L is Solution Explorer. So I can open up. I can open that up like that, I guess. Or I can just go like this. Go straight to the search. All right. Oops. And then. Close that and I'm trying to shift to a different window here, but it's not showing me a quick option for it. There's also this here I can do. Go to next error. There's a Visual Studio search on Control Q. What does that look like? Type data in here, does it? So that's actually searching. Oh, and it says it is bringing up total economy data. And if I open it up, does it like. Okay. So they do have control Q as well. And it's control control Q, control T. It allows me to search for stuff. And that comes up instantly. Okay. I'll give that a shot then. So the only other thing would be swapping between windows, which this is saying try Alt F6.
is what is what is the carrot? I'm not sure. So Alt F6, huh? So over here, and I click Alt F6. Doesn't okay. That's not what I'm looking for, is it? E um yeah, I'm not sure how to actually swap between these. Oh, and I can actually configure my own key keys anyway. It's actually a whole line cut. I didn't even know that. Okay, so control L. Tab, tab left is shift tab. Oh, okay. No, that makes sense. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Control R, Control M is extract method. View, navigate backwards is just Control minus. So come over here and I push Control plus, Control minus. So that's really strange. It's under it's like indeterministic. It's really weird. Not sure, but it goes close, but not quite. Control shift is forward. Okay, so that works kind of. I'm willing to do it like that. It's really strange though. Control tab. Next split pane. This is a split pane. Next document window nav is control tab. What does that do? Oh, I forgot about this thing. Okay. So that's kind of correct, but Next document window is simply control F6. Okay. So there's one document in each of these that essentially amounts to that. All right, well, not a perfect setup necessarily, but I go like this, I can, let's see, what happens like that? No, it doesn't let me swap. Other oh, on. This one's also also broken. Let me go with one at a time though here. So, active scanning element. It's going to need total economy data. So, let me see here. 
total economy data is not total cost of active scan, which is what active scanning data is for. Active scanning radius object. Okay, that's also in there. And then active scanning radius is in here also. Active scanning angle. Active scanning, active scanning, total economy. Total cost of active scan. Displayed total economy. All right. Active scanning stuff. Active scanning, total cost of active scan, economy, scan and economy. I think it's mostly just those two. Yep. Okay, so let's also add total economy data. Sorry about my cat. He's getting a little antsy about something outside, apparently. Oh, my bad. I called the wrong thing. That's why it wasn't auto completing for me. Okay, so. Now we're just going to go, go and grab like every single. Oh, it's going to grab every single one. I forgot how to do, okay, here it is. All right, well, if I grab it up here and I just go down to the bottom. So basically, Place them all with to start with. We'll start with total economy. I guess what's the first one? Yeah, total economy data. And in all the places where total economy data is incorrect, I have to go to the other thing. Let me double check real quick. I'm gonna see if there's a way to VS VS twenty twenty two. Select multiple words with mouse. That says shift alt, okay. Ah, uh, that's not correct. Yeah, it just doesn't have anything good. Okay, so whatever. Let's just. They, I know there's a way to. Uh, yeah, I guess it's just. I can't figure out any combination. To grab them all, so whatever. Oh, you know what I can do? I can like this. Now that I think about it, if I'm very careful. I can just do something like this. And replace this with 
active scanning data. Okay, so let's copy active scanning data and then make the rounds again for all of these. Ah, shoot, I screwed up that last one. Perfect. Let me see if I can... Okay, so I gotta go like this. And this is actually getting replaced with active scanning data. Oh, I missed one here, so... Ah, oh, and there was a, there actually was a cool... Um, It was like a debug thing. Let me see where I can find it here. Okay, go to next error. Control plus up F12, is that what it is? Control F12. Opens up the, whatever that is, and then control up F12. Control up F12. Okay, whatever. Never mind, let's just find it. Oh, I can use this little things over here, can't I? Okay, so. And I think this was like cost of act total cost of active scan. I guess this doesn't have to be okay. So here we're just looking at of the yank player data, but then it's going to want some few things done. So we're looking at totally iterate player economy data and I think that's basically it, but Okay. 
Okay, so here we go. Player data and And then from here we need the, and I can't exactly remember, but I think it's iterate player. Oh, I wanted to do it a little differently than that, didn't I? I wanted to try control QT data. Total economy data has total economy and displayed. So I'm looking at, or I'm looking for iterate player economy data, perhaps. There's a hotkey to put that over there automatically, I think. Yeah, so current investing list is part of, oh. Yeah, exactly, so iterate player economy. Oh, and is there an update or? No. So we just have to grab the, or we don't have the cache. Oh no, these are functions. Functions, but they only run in start, though. All right, well, we're going to have to, I guess we're just going to have to cache them anyway. Oh, excuse me, this is incorrect, my bad. All right, and so let's see. Current investing list, current investing list, current investing list, total economy gain per tick. Current investing list, current investing queue, total economy gain per tick, per tick. so it's all it's like to do. Infrastructure investment elements. So a few so there's a solid few to do on this one. No update loop. Functions? Any functions? No, it doesn't look like it. So G. Okay, so now it's like, you now it's getting intelligent about what I want from it. So current investing list, we just did that. That was great player economy data. And I also need current active selection. Oh, whoops, no, that's not correct. Not correct. What is current active selection data? My bad. My bad, my bad. All right, they're pretty mixed in here, so. Or I guess, no, it's, I guess like, like this, I can make it work. So current investing list. 
is part of player economy. So I can go like this, go like this, and then go like Great player economy data. Just fix that. And then a current active selection comes from current active selection data. Same thing, current active, current active selections and we will replace player data with current active selection data. And then the last few are Iterate player economy data. So I can just grab them. Although I don't want to grab, well, okay. We will just go like this and fix it. And I think that's everything. We generated a new error, unfortunately, which is. Alright, so a few more things to do here. Nebula, Nebula. I guess that's all Nebula stuff. So it's actually making me want to learn how to do this real quick. So there was a way to like auto split screen something. So it says it says next split pane, but that's means I have to create a split pane, huh? All right. Not gonna worry about it right now. So it has discovered some extra errors after completing those compilations. So I'm gonna to have to continue working on this. And the nebula data is what I'm trying to look up here. So maybe a spawning data. And just to double check minimum. Yeah, it's got the resolution values. It's got the density values. It's got the edge buffer values. It has a star, star prefabs collection. It's got the spawn buffers, the minimum nebula star count, and okay, so they're all nebula spawning data. If 
this thing called it star data, which is down here already. Okay, so I just have to do the same thing here. So nebula spawning data, nebula spawning data, player data, get component, nebula spawning data. And I just have to run through here and grab all of these player data. Oh, I didn't rename it, so it's just nebula spawning data. Whoops, I actually closed both of them. All right, and that's everything as far as I can tell. So let's open this back up and Okay, now it's adding everything. So everything except for start data. Needs to get added back onto the player data. And then I need to Figure out a way to like collapse all of the components because if I collapse these, they are pretty organized here. They're almost in alphabetical order. But if I leave this component and I come back to this component, okay, they are. Okay, so for now, I guess that's okay. And that's way better. That can have, like, so much more data compacted into that same amount of editor space. And there's also little components. So maybe there's something custom that has to be worked on. It can, tentatively, I can make a custom editor for it. All right, so that took, like, nearly an hour and 50 minutes to refactor all that and real quick I should make sure that I'm gonna have to reset all my data values, but okay. So I think all of that is fine. I might have screwed up that one. Pan adjusters and zoom adjusters are jacked. What was that one? Like 110, 100,000, I think. And zoom adjusters was just, excuse me. It was like, that was way less. Maybe something like this, I think. Perhaps, for sure. Yeah, I don't know if the camera will spawn correctly or not. Seconds per tick, one. And I think these two, the other two other ones change of their own volition. Maybe the spawning has the star now. Okay, so this one has a few factors that I'm trying to remember. This was like 0, 0.0. Oh, 3. Okay. And the nebula 
four star spawn. Hold on. Incrementer. I can't remember. I think it was like zero point one five. And then we'll say 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. So this is 4, 8. And this couldn't be 1, 2. It had to be at least 2, 3. I'm pretty sure. And then... Or 2, 4, maybe? I don't know. This is like 4, 8. And then this... I don't know if I used edge buffer, but spawn buffer. I think I added this. And because edge buffer, oh, I don't think I used edge buffer yet. Those are the action map names. Which, if I feed these in, I never, ever, ever have to change them here. I only ever have to change them here, and they will change and every other part of the code is effectively how that works. I never have to change them here, and I never have to change them in the code. And it's kind of the same thing for the actions. Because I can name the actions here, and then I only ever have to change them here. I never have to change them anywhere else. So I don't have to like constantly re rename them. So that's something I could potentially do as a refactor as well, but I'm trying to work with the input system. It's not too complicated. It has some nifty listening commands for picking actions and stuff, so like there are some parts of it that are nifty. There are some parts of it that I'm not a huge fan of, though, for sure. I think I could probably use the use this to build the maps anyway. I'll have to consider it in the long run. That all gets changed manually. That is all fine for now. That gets changed manually or by code, and then that gets changed by code. All right, so let's just see what happens here. Because I think main camera it has. Okay, I already fixed this anyway. Okay, so I'm not remembering where I set my camera position, actually. The camera is actually starting out in the right spot, I think, maybe. Alright, so that's working, and then, whoa, panning is way off. Okay, so that's better. It's still like a little jittery. It's hard, it might be hard to tell from this from that view, but it just feels a little jittery, but it's kind of panning. And then but zooming is not working, so I guess maybe I had the numbers backwards here. Or Let's just add these values in. Is that the equivalent adjusters? All right, so that's okay. And then that's a little better, but it's just like it's very micro zoom. So I guess I did have it way up. Okay.
Alright, so that's a little better. It just has some semblance of control. And okay, so that's working, so let's see what else. So, hovering is basically working. Although the star density is way too high. Um, selection works. And let's see, zooming in. Okay, so zooming in works. And I can zoom out on the nebula. I can zoom in on the nebula. And I can pan the nebula, but I've got to. F I, long run, long term, I've got to fix it to where it doesn't pan. Where I need to fix it where it can't pan outside of the. Actual nebula. Okay. And then I was working on this. The Fresnel effect is working, but it, the colors are incorrect. So I've got to fix that too. Okay. And then I can zoom out here. All right. So that's all working again. And then, oh, it looks like the economy is not ticking properly, though. And is that because I did not update this properly? I might have missed one thing in here. Let's see, maybe I messed this up. No, I did not. That's, that's still correct. All right, so for some reason, I'm gonna have to investigate why the economy is not working when I start the game for some reason. So I'm probably gonna have to hook up the debugger next time and see what happens. Um, let me check my data actually. So total economy data is not updating properly. It might just be that I have no planet with an infrastructure and that this is set to zero. So if I, if I change this to five manually, if it will let me, it is, it's actually not letting me change it. Oh, I, that's probably hard getting itself set anyway. Okay, so I think the reason is because I'm not. I don't have a planet or something. Um, 
I'll have to figure out why that's happening, but all right, so I managed to complete the refactoring I wanted to in this video. Sorry, that's all I really managed to do for the last two vids, but I had to get it done to make the rest of the development process a little better. So thank you very much for sticking with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.